Hi everyone, welcome to part two of the paperclip chain mandrel video series. So what we had talked about in the last video was using these guys here to make your paperclip chain. And once you have your paperclip chain, you can either finish it like that, like you would any other chain. You put a jump ring on and a clasp and call it good or a necklace or you know, whatever you want to make. But this video is going to take what we learned in the last one and show you how to make it into a chain like this, which is very much like a barbed wire. So you guys want to know how to make a barbed wire chain link? Uh, a lot of bracelets I've seen that are, that are barbed wire are like solid. So you like, you know, put it on and it's all... This one I like because it's all linked together and it moves and it makes noise and I like that about jewelry. So stay tuned and we will show you the next steps in taking that paperclip chain and making a barbed wire link. If you haven't already, check out lionpunchforge.com. Hit the subscribe button and YouTube and Instagram and all those other places. You're going to see a lot of tools in this series also available through Pepe Tools. Down below, there's a little link there. That clicking on those links is my affiliate, and by clicking on those link, those links, you end up uh, supporting the Forge channel. So I appreciate it, and you guys uh, enjoy. So first of all, I'm gonna do a twist. This is the same type of twist that you would do with a with a uh, Cuban link chain. So Cuban link chain, you'll do your ovals. You'll twist it and then you'll file off the top. So we're just gonna do the twisting. We're not gonna do the filing off the top to create that particular type of shape. To do that, I'll use a little rod that I'll put in one side. And then I have this little copper doohickey daddy that I'm going to put in the other side, last link. First link, last link. I'm gonna close this into my vise. Nice and tight. I'm going to make sure it doesn't slip. And then I'm going to add tension. Adding tension is going to get me that nice kind of even bend. And I'm just going to twist until I like what it looks like. Now if your solder joints are bad, and hopefully mine aren't, you'll have them pop. And yeah, I don't want that. I don't want them to pop. Starting to get my twist. My end just came loose from my uh, little bench vise thing here. So I'm gonna put that back in. And then I'm gonna keep on going. Starting to get my final ones twisting now. Sometimes you need to take a break and anneal. <clears throat> or you can help it along too. There we go. Last one's twisting now. Not too bad. That'll work just fine. So let's move on to the next one. <clears throat> We've got our small link. Going to do the same thing. Insert wire in. Let's hope all of our solder joints hold. Another little piece of copper here to hold it. Now we're going to, again, first link, last link, add tension and then just twist. And there's a solder joint. Mother of God. So now I know I had at least one solder joint that didn't go. So in order to fix that, I'm going to go back over 
solder on one of my new links where that old link was and then I can just continue twisting. So, excuse me. All right, next up, I've got all my chains and I'm gonna make the links. So what I have here, zoom you guys in, is same thing, 12 gauge wire that I've bent over into a little fishy shape. And what that's gonna do is slide on to my chain. Once I have them all threaded on, I can go ahead and start putting them where I want, tightening them down, and I'll show that once I get there. Once it's slid on, I just give it a little snug right in the center. Like that. You can bend it over with pliers. I like using uh, parallel. And then that's on there nice and tight. I'm going to add some solder to that once I get all these on there. And then a little bit of work to get all those uh, on there but show you what those look like right now nice little fun so I've got two little one and a big one and uh, next thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna solder these I'm gonna switch back to the smaller torch tip because I only want to heat up a very limited area right in here and in doing that, I don't want to overheat and flow solder from another place. So head right over there and do some soldering. So I'm going to use, uh, I wasn't going to do this. I was going to just use uh, regular old solder chips. But uh, since I have this, I want, to, uh, I want to show you guys a new product. So this is the Pepe Tools Bench Basic Paste Solder. This Smart Lux my pick to apply it where I want it So, uh, clothes look different because uh, same, I uh, ended up not having time to finish this video yesterday. So, here I am in the shop again. I've got our two chains all soldered up. And they are looking really nice. Sat in the pickle for a little while. And the next thing I'm going to do is use a cup burr. And that cup burr is going to go on each of these little prongs because you don't want something uncomfortable to wear. So, I'm going to do some cup burring. And then I'm going to uh, just do a little bit of uh, rough cleanup with some uh, rubberized abrasives. For those of you who don't know what a cup burr is, it's a burr with a concave end, and it's got teeth on the inside of that concave. And what it does is you basically, where did I put my concave? Somewhere in here. Yeah, we'll find it. <laughs> anyway, you poop on there run your flex shaft up and it uh, rounds out that end of the wire. It's a great finishing effect so that you don't have any pokey bits. Nobody wants pokey bits on their wrist. All right, so I've got my cup burr, get some blade butter and just start going after these guys.
next thing. So we, we've got all the little pokey bits rounded off. Uh, I like the way they're feeling right now. I see one just now that I don't like. So I'm gonna finish it. So I like to just kind of rub my hands over it, see if there's anything that is sticking out that I don't like. Just found another one. Kind of just doing this. If there's anything I don't like the feel of, then I'll stop there and I'll look at it and see if I can refine it a little bit more. Um, right now, that one's a little rough. Okay. Move on to the next one, do the same thing. Just kind of look at it, or don't even really look at it. Just use your hands to kind of feel. And there's a few little places I'm finding. The step after this is going to help kind of refine that a little bit more. I said we were going to use a rubberized abrasive first. I think what we're going to do is continue on with that. And then right after that, I'll throw them in the magnetic pin polisher. So I'll talk about the magnetic pin polisher here in a in a minute. The better and the more you clean, the the better off you are with uh, you know a finished product. So, all right, I'm gonna move to a rubberized abrasive, and I'll let you guys watch. the kind of roughly finished with rubberized abrasive chained here um, what I want to do is kind of clean up the edges make them kind of nice buttery smooth and I'm going to do that using my pin polisher this one came from Pepe tools it's made by a company called Arby they're in the US with the pin polisher basically there's a magnet down on this big yellow part you may not be able to see the yellow can you no you can't but inside here there's a little yellow pad and there's magnets below that and they spin around when the motor turns on. Inside here I have a steel pin, a little tiny itty bitty pin, and when that magnet spins it spins those pins around. And in doing so, they spin the pins around your jewelry. So I'm going to turn this on for probably about an hour and just let it, let it do its thing. So I've got my power, I have my speed, and then I'm just going to Turn this guy on. All right, so polisher's done. I went over, I soldered a little jump ring on with a uh, lobster clasp and uh, then stuck them back in the tumbler to kind of get everything all cleaned up again. So, what I have is these two. Beautiful. So, for one of them, the smaller one, it, my wife wants it highly polished, so I'm gonna take it over to the buffer and do that. I'm going to liver of sulfur this one and then I'll buff off the kind of high points so I get kind of a, a little bit different look. But uh, there's not a whole lot of room over by the buffer and uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then I'll come back, show you guys pictures. Um, thank you guys for watching. I uh, appreciate it. If you haven't already, follow lionpunchforge.com. Uh, and uh, you know we've got an Instagram and a YouTube and all that other kind of fun stuff. So check these out when I'm done and we will see you on the next video. <laughs>